welcome back. Congratulations on doing the first step of resolving, dissolving and transforming anger. Today, we will talk about the second step. Because in the first step, the first step was cause, pause and effect. So, there is a trigger. Before the reaction, you use a pause which could be your breath, a sip of water, a little movement, whatever. Now, the space that you have created by using the pause, this space is what we are going to use now to make a choice. So, I call the second step getting your power back. Because in this fraction of a moment when you are taking a breath or having a sip of water, learn to think for yourself, should I get angry or should I drop it? Should I lose my temper or should I choose not to do so? And do your best to take your first step and make a choice. I choose not to lose my temper. I choose to let this be for now. I look at it later, whatever. In that fraction of a moment, to do or not to do, you take a decision. So, let us say out of 10 times you got irritated, angry or furious, you did this once. Maybe it was mild irritation and you thought, okay, let it be, I am just not going to allow myself to get so irritated. I am just going to have a sip of water and I am going to walk out of here or I am just going to go for a 15 minute walk and come back or put on the television or whatever it is. This is a huge victory because your mind now understands that you are no longer a slave to your anger, that you can take control when you want and you can turn the wheel the other way. Practice this, try and do at least five, six, try and make, I beg your pardon, try and make at least five, six such decisions. At different times, say to yourself, okay, I'm going to let this go. It's okay, I'm going to drop it for now, okay, we're not dropping it forever. Uh, I'm choosing not to lose my temper. And notice how you feel when you make that decision. Notice it in your body. Notice where the tightness was that got released. Notice how the breath you were holding now gets expelled. I let it be for now. Notice that feeling of expansion within. When you have done this a few times, is the point where you will now take the third step. The third step is what I call insight, which means now you step back a bit and start looking at this whole anger scenario and Try and see what it's about. So, one of the things you will see is that your triggers are of two types. One is what I am calling passive triggers and the other is active triggers. Passive triggers means those people who are doing their thing how they know how to do it at their level of efficiency, at their level of knowledge, at their level of energy or whatever. Okay? 
because their levels do not match your expectation therefore you are getting anything from irritated to really angry however they are not actively doing anything to aggravate you okay the second is the active triggers which means those people or those instances where the aim is to trigger you to anger you a very good example is a child who will throw a tantrum with the idea of getting his mother's attention even if it is the negative attention or some people you know who intentionally you know it can be someone in the family it can be among friends colleagues whatever who will intentionally do things that they know will annoy you because they want to get there is a kind of a perverse pleasure or whatever they get some kind of uh, pay off they get when you react however when you look at it carefully you will find that the active triggers are very very few most of the triggers are passive triggers which means people who are doing their own thing in the way they know best but because it doesn't meet your expectation and you feel you have a right to expect there therefore you are getting angry now this is a space where we can do a lot of stock taking so the objective of this exercise is to reduce the load of triggers that cause a reaction in us okay so we are trying to bring down the number of triggers so as when we think on it so i am just giving you a few examples one of it is if there is a person whose level of efficiency always irritates you you either think that okay i need to change this person or if i can't change this person i need to lower my expectation or change my expectation because otherwise this um equation is always going to be like this and i will always get angry and it's not serving any purpose so either i change my expectation or i change the person sometimes the answer can be dialogue communication to talk to a person and say look this is my expectation you are not meeting my expectation would you be able to tell me why this is so perhaps we can both discuss it and understand and do something about it and in many cases this could be very productive the other thing you could do is to perhaps understand that some of your expectations whether from yourself or from others are unrealistic even the expectations we have from ourselves especially from ourselves sometimes the bar we set for ourselves is so high we are not able to meet it so we decide that we will exercise kindness we ask ourselves if i am not able to meet my expectation what then and normally there's no great consequence to it okay so then we can think okay can i be kind to myself and lower the bar for myself can i lower the bar for others sometimes we realize that the expectation we have of others is actually none of our business it's something that they set a standard for themselves a level for themselves and they are happy with what they achieve and really we should not be in their space telling them otherwise so whichever way it is i am asking that we do a little bit of introspection so that we get some insight regarding the active uh, triggers there we really have to take some firm decisions either we um, decide that okay we want to move out of the space or if it's not possible then we see what are the ways that we can protect ourselves from this kind of aggravation okay and i absolutely do not wish to underplay this uh, aggravation 
at times it can be very abusive, it can be very bad and we can be in very, very toxic situations. However, if at some point we feel we cannot get out of it, then our only solution is to protect ourselves. With the passive triggers, we can see how to tweak them, how to minimize the effect it has on our life. So in the second step, what I have suggested is that we start exercising the power of choice. We just pause and say, should I let myself lose my temper? Should I let it be for now? Because even in the letting be, later on we may be able to find a better solution. So we exercise this, we see how it feels and we internalize that feeling and then we come, after we have done at least five, six of these, we come to that step of insight where we open out the scenario and look at it to see where we can do something, where we cannot do something, you know, what is in our hands, what is not in our hands and what can we do in both these situations. So this is the simple second step. Do it for some time, see how well you do with it and then come back and we will discuss this further. Thank you so much for being with me.